Hey everybody, welcome to our ultimate episode of Memories. That's right, we're on episode 3 of Memories, talking about cannon fodder. Not the game. Should we have made this a mini-season? A mini-season? Oh, it is a mini-season, isn't it? I guess it is it. Like, I've just been putting, I've just been, I've been writing them in our, uh, the the anchor back end as bonus episodes, but I guess they could be like a mini season ten. Mini season ten, keeping it small and sweet, short, keeping your mo- your uh, moist, keeping you moist. Sure, <laughs> that's what they say. That's what they say. Uh... <laughs> oh boy. Uh, so. <laughs> Uh, cannon fodder, as you've already said. Uh, this one is uh, produced at the same studio as Magnetic Rose, so Studio Four C, okay. um, and is uh, directed by Katsuhiro Otomo. Okay, who's he? Who is the creator of Akira? Oh, he's so. This one is the creator of Akira. Yeah. Um wait, wait. As in like the writer of the, yep, the, manga. the manga. Yep. All right. And and of course he was one of the creative forces in the for the animated film adaption as well. Yeah. And he wrote so, memories, right? He wrote this one. He just wrote this one story of memories. Uh no, sorry. He wrote the he wrote Stink Bomb and this one. All right, okay. Magnetic Rose was by uh Satoshi Kon, who was Perfect Blue, Paprika, Tokyo Godfathers. Yeah, but the manga of memories. Oh, uh probably, but also the writer of the thing. Yeah. Hang on. Uh, his memories is also a manga. Well, yes. I think. Yes, well, based on his based on his three manga shorts. Yeah, so the writer of her Akira wrote the manga for all the three stories and then they all kind yes. of Yes. And had... he adapted this he adapted two of those into screenplays for Stink Bomb and Cannon Fodder. But Satoshi Kon wrote the screenplay for Magnetic Rose. Yeah. Which, actually, having not talked about that in the Magnetic Rose episode, makes a whole lot of sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. See, many series. We can refer back to the first episode. Call it, call it back. Call it back. Uh, if you have not watched that, and you just watched this one, or listen to this one, even, you can watch that. Listen to know. it. Yep. It's, it'll be yeah. on it'll be on Anchor it's, or, it's totally possible it's there and on YouTube's by the time you see this one so yeah I uh I don't really like this one Colin <laughs> like you say it's got it's newest nuances I was saying it's there's nothing really about it it's just kind of like a slice of life for this yeah weird war that's going on between two moving cities at least yes uh, and I, I think that the main thing is is that they're sort of the whole point is they continue to fire at each other but it also seems like they never see each other really yeah it looks like potentially they're on different like planes of time you know like one person might be halfway across the world where it's daytime so they're firing at night because the way it yeah, goes it's super weird because the way it goes like it starts off with a kid in bed sleeping and the clocks go off also the art, artistic yes. style is like not your not your standard anime esque artistic style and like 
it's like it looks all hand drawn and stuff. It's got like that. It doesn't have the crispness. Yeah. It's it's more rough. So I would describe it as more European. Mm. It's like um, um it's like a like the I don't know, who's the guy? It's got it's the, the like the the scream tire like oil painting type thing. Edward 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 Munch. Yeah. So it kind of looks I, like that in a weird way. To, to me, uh, there's. I'll send you this. Obviously, this doesn't really work particularly well in a an audio medium, but mm-hmm. uh, there is a. How do I send chat messages in this thing? Click there we go. Chat window. So I think it is a little bit reminiscent. Of, I think it's a French cartoon, French animated movie called uh, Belleville Rendezvous. Oh, yeah, it probably is. Hang on, let's see if I access the chat menu because I popped the window out and then it's like, oh, this this chat is now oh, here. No. It's all getting confusing, man. Don't want to break it too much. It... Nah, it's all good. But yeah, basically, um. It does. It made it made me think more of uh, European, traditionally European animation styles. It had that sort of uh, rougher, surrealist look to it. Um, a lot of um, well, actually, I suppose French animated stuff has, and uh, maybe even to like a degree, like some Don Bluth stuff. Yeah, I say it's, but it's one hundred percent. I'll just leave it. I'll look at it later. What hundred percent? It's a uh, rough, uh, a rougher drawing, like like it's done in pastels slash oil, kind of motion. It, it's very grimy. Yeah, but then uh, and and not in a not in an Akira way, where yeah. it's quite clean cut grime. Yeah, this is sort of like rougher looking. Um, yeah, and this. It's Th- interesting. This would definitely fall into a steampunk uh, category. Yeah, for real. It's so like you said, it's about the kid who uh, wow. wakes up and his ki- his parents are very upset with him because he's, he's not you know, doing well enough in his lessons and he's not doing the extra to be better as a, as a guy who fires the gun because yeah. yeah. firing the gun is important. Oh, well... <laughs> He gets, let's say he gets woken up, clocks goal, wakes up, gets up, gets dressed, gets shouted at by his mom, like, ah, get up, you're going to be late. Oh, it's for school, and he's like, all oh, right, lazy bum. He could go up early, and that, and then he gets out of the room, and there's this big portrait of some grand general or something, and he slits. Yep. And he's like, goes down. Has breakfast. And his dad's just kind of sitting there going, whereas the uh, mum just giving him, giving all the all the lip that, uh, yeah, that you get from the, your your mum. It's like, oh yeah, you're failing at this. Your grades are terrible. Uh, you should put in extra work. You should go to school early and do the extra training and stuff. And um, and that and then he kind of just blatantly ignores her and goes, you know what, I I would like. One of those music helmets, mom, and she's like, "They got banned. You're not allowed to have them in school at the last parent meeting. <laughs> you, you tell them." And uh, she just like throws and and it's all the steampunk type weird creations happening. It's like it's all kind of piston driven stuff. Yeah, the kitchen, I was going to say like, it, it's like it's like a world built of uh, steam powered cuckoo clocks. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, to a degree, and it's pistons. Yeah, uh, it's all because it's kind of like it's everything's kind of built around cannons. Everything has a cannon. Yes, on it. all the roofs have like big turrets for firing car and cannons. Um, because they're at war. Because they're it at war. They have been apparently forever. For every day, yeah, they're on moving 
moving cities as well. Uh, so basically he gets his food and then they walk out. And I kind of like this bit in a, a technical sense. It's like mm-hmm. when I watched Winter... Was it Winter Soldier? Yeah, it was Winter Soldier. I found the best bit of that movie was uh-huh. the bit when Captain America walked up to the window in the building and you saw the lift come up the side with the dudes in it. And uh-huh. then he walked into the lift and then they pressed the button and then the lift goes down and then obviously it cuts into the lift where they basically say something and he's like, uh, nope, and beats beat all the, the Hydra yep. agents up and then jumps out. Okay. But it's the just the kind of pan, the artistic pilot panning of that that shot. I always like because it's like oh, that's such pretty cool. I, I like that. You can see him looking out the window, waiting for the lift to come, and the lift coming yeah. up. Yeah. Again. In. So this this kind of this... a similar effect. Only it's like it's it's panning back the way. The shot. Yeah. And so, like you're you're seeing them walking forward into the lift, and then the lift kind of like going down, and it, and the the camera falls, and that's that's pretty cool. You don't see that often, especially in in that style of of animation. Of animation. Uh, to to be fair, I think you're like uh, this mo- This short does not suffer direction problems like in terms of the way it's shot and the way it's drawn like i think they've obviously uh there's something very uh gorgeous and stylized about it and it has a theme and a consistency and Mm -hmm. the level of world building that it does with you know just a a scene or like you say like a camera motion and things like that it's very impressive Mm um i think it's just yeah it's just weird it just it just kind of falls just a little bit short for me it feels just very um i i guess it's the messaging of it seems really ham-fisted uh, yeah i i'm not entirely sure what the message is of it it's certainly a, uh, a, a slice of life in this in this world <laughs> i feel like it's kind of inher- inheritance of enemy right like you know um oh well they've always hated these people we've always been at war so we're going to continue to be at war and no one's going to question it so you're just consistently indoctrinating the next generation well, into this this forever war basically you say that you see that so there's scenes in it so basically uh the after the scene they go down the lift and then they come to the mm-hmm. train station and the dad and the kid separate and the kid goes further down into the streets and I think here he walks. I don't know. I thought I think he's okay. He walks there through the streets, and mm-hmm. goes and goes to school, and yep. uh, pays little attention to the, his lessons about trigonometry and how that's how that will help you work out how to be more accurate in your shots and stuff that's like the, that. The angle to fire your cannon at. Yeah. Well, it talks about sine, cosine, and uh, tangent. I mean, I, well, I'm no mathologist, but <laughs> I'm not sure how sine and cosine would help you with your angles. But I could be wrong. Oh, they, they're all workout uh, angles and st- stuff. If I remember, fuck. I mean, maybe. that's that's like I mean, maybe thirty years ago, man. That I did that shit. Yeah, and sine and cosine are about working out angles. It's always tangent. But they just still have to make crafts as well. Yeah, no, I, 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 I know nothing of trigonometry. Apparently not. <laughs> no. I thought you watched like the math programs about maths. I watch uh, stand up maths, and he talks a lot about different things. Mm. Not all of them with which my brain engages, because uh, I I have the dumb. <laughs> and it is quite difficult sometimes. Yeah, well, I wouldn't say you had the time, but yeah, uh, I, do, I, do, I do when it comes to maths. <laughs> I, um, a truer statement has probably never been spoken than my ignorance of 
hey, uh, t- sine and cosine don't have anything to do with angles. I think you're right. I think they do. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> pretty sure they do. <laughs> uh, anyway, so I never, I, I would never be very good at firing a cannon. I never use cosine of that whenever I play like um, those tank games. You know the ones where you're like scorched earth or yeah, because it's just move it here, here. Yeah, it's move, not like move your angle <laughs> and then put your velocity into it. You don't really put any. Yeah, I, I just yeah, like oh, I I guess like velocity. Yeah, that maybe makes sense because you're talking about like the intensity of the curve mm-hmm. yeah okay now i'm now i'm getting it yeah, yeah. you getting it now? <laughs> now i'm getting it yeah 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 uh anyway so there's, there's more to it than just pointing it and firing it <laughs> yeah so he he kind of goes off in a like a dream stares out to the can mm-hmm. the big this all the other cannons are like just normal color, and then there's this big red one sticks out of the building, and he goes and focuses on that, and then that is where his dad works. And they go in, and it's like, all right, we're going to load shells one and two now, and they have like this like factory esque uh, procedure of loading the cannons, and then yeah, loading it in. Getting the big shells, man. Those those are like uh, the Gusta shells that they're firing. Oh, the, yeah, these were big boys. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, the, the process of actually loading the cannon did make me think of like the old uh, uh, Warner Brother Looney Tunes. You know, I was expecting that music to play. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't have the rights. No, well, Powerhouse is like a. Is it Powerhouse? I'm pretty sure it's Powerhouse. <laughs> it's good, good shit. Four C, you said this one was. Uh, no, Powerhouse is the name of the music. Oh, it might be free now. Uh, it is the Raymond Scott Quintet. Uh, Powerhouse, nineteen thirty-seven. Yeah, uh, so they're in this factory and they're loading the cannon, and it's all. Kind of like, yep, get the can in, put it in, get the thing in, load it up, and his dad's just a, a manual labor in there. He's, uh, he is, uh, oh god, he's, he assists, he's a cannon loader, I think yeah. is his job. Yeah, I think he's the cannon loader, so he's like, there's a big, because the shells are massive, they're in big machines, and they could pretty much all be automated, you know, but no, not, yeah. not in this. Uh, Loads it up, clear like that, and then they all kind of get, right, evacuate now, got to evacuate, and run up uh, and hide behind some things, and they watch the cannon, and then this pompous general guy just walks in, just struts in, yep. strutting his stuff with his with cape. His, his massive stomach. <laughs> yeah, massive stomach and cape and like the gold chewing hat thing and gets, yep. gets up. Uh, so there's a whole bit where he just kind of walks in and he's like da 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 and then he walks onto this platform and then the platform goes Rrr. it's all very smooth and he gets lifted up to the, the, the gun platform and then he walks forward, gets to the control panel, throws his cape off. Yep. And then presses the button. <laughs> he just presses this button and it's like, boom! And it's shots fired. And then I think he goes back to the kid. Oh no, it goes... He's, yeah, he's, he, he's watching it, right? Yeah. Yeah, everyone's watching. So it goes back to Kit, and I think then it also then goes to the wife who's in a, an actual factory producing the shells. She's making, yeah, she's making the munitions. Yeah, and that's like this. That's quite World War Two uh, era because World War certainly that's what one I think. Well, that's what my grand did in World War Two. Yeah, uh, she made uh, uh, firing pins for grenades. She assembled them. Yeah, maybe that's. It's World War Two. I mean, to be honest, it's it's likely it was in both. That's just the one I know of because it's like yeah. it was told to me as a story. <laughs> yeah, no, it's that's about right. It's 
about round about your area, there's a, a an abandoned animations factory, isn't there? Down down yeah. the west coast, I think there's one in the west coast hidden yeah. away. Yeah, yeah, you're probably right. There's a lot of, I mean, there's a lot of industry on the west coast from the days gone. So yeah, and because all the men went to war, the women did the had the, like the nice small hands and steady hands and stuff where all the glists the glistening and, and stuff were making that ammunition. Um yeah, so it's very reminiscent of the Second World War for us here in Britain. Um and yeah, he fires it, cuts to them and they're all kind of saluting, going do 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 the shots been fired, salute. Uh, and then one of the women's just kind of standing there going, her, and then uh, the mother goes like, "Can her do it?" Because it's like the, 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 the. It's important. The floor manager or whatever, whoever he was, important man comes in and goes, "Right, that's it. Go and have your lunch break, because there's be no lunch break on, uh, during the, the airstrike or whatever is the." Return fire, and you're not allowed to have yeah a lens break on return fire. Everyone must bear witness. Yeah, um, so they all have their lunch. Even the the workers in the the cannon factory, uh, and the school all have their lunch at the same time. And at this point, you get a caption of like protesters protesting for one better working conditions in the factory. They said, "Oh, let's not use yep. such toxic." Gunpowder, it's bad for us, it has stuff in it's it. It's bad, yeah. And I think there was the other one, potentially, it didn't say it, but like, I think it was potentially was like, this war is pointless, maybe. Because it's not in any language. It's not like in Japanese or anything on the posters. It's no. all uh, a made up script, a scribe. All language. Yeah. Do you need just a language. <laughs> but And it's just little pictures and stuff. So then it, it cuts back uh, and they're off to do another fire and volley. But do we not... I, I think there's like... Uh, is there not like news coverage saying it's like, oh, we did it. We fucking hit him. Uh, uh, no, no. no that's, that was that, good. That's later. So is it, that later? Yeah, yeah. This is when they all go back. This is pretty much at the end. So... So oh okay. They'll do the land and they have the cutting and uh, the father's in part of the loading crew for the next one and for whatever reason the crane drops the shell. Yeah, and yeah, get, that's right. And he gets shouted at by his uh, commanding officer that oh, you can't be doing that, you gotta be careful. Bah oh, you get your punishment is is to stand. Yeah. Uh, they make it stand next to the cannon while it's being fired. Yeah, yeah. And he loses wow. and they're having ga- they they wear all wear gas masks, like old war war gas masks. He's he's not allowed to. No, his fall it fell off and the thing came down. Does his fall off? Yeah. Uh, and then because they blowed the cannon and and the the general pompous general guy is already there to fire the, oh, he comes the by, blast. Yeah. So that's doesn't make any sense to me because he, oh no, he puts the mask on when he fires it. Yeah, he does. Yeah. You're right. And I see the father's face just kind of like starts sweating. In like, it's like, oh no, shit. And we sw- should we should talk about the father and the son's deeply horrified and haunted expression. Oh yeah, yeah. Like. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're so haunted you're like ghosts <laughs> oh god they're yeah. just beady red eyes and sallow faces it's just nightmarish yeah I don't know I think it is, it is a whole nightmare but I think that's maybe just that's all the dark side of the went with but I'm trying to think. Oh well, it's, the, it's the style of... is the style is generally like that. But also, I don't think everyone has the same horrifying eyes that they do. Maybe not. No, you're right. I think I think uh, they're a bit uh, 
lot more gar garmless garm gar garmly garmless garmless it's just like dark dark eye there's just like no pupils it's just a whole black thing oh Maybe they all have eyes like that i don't know they just like everyone has haunted fucking might like they're just so fucking haunted well i mean they're constantly at war and get bombed and then bomb in the other place i mean he puts yeah. his he basically puts his, his fingers in his ears and it goes yep and then <clears throat> And then it cuts back to them having tea. He survives. And he's having his tea with yep. his son and his mom. Uh, and his son's at the table doodling on a bit of paper. And yep. th- does his son ask who we're fighting? And the father... I think he does. Yeah. yeah. And the father says, I'll, I'll tell you when you're older. And, yeah, uh, and and this is the you're right. This is the bit where the TV's on at the dinner table, as it was at the start. But this time, it's talking about the. Yep, we we did it. We hit we hit the enemy moving city, uh, and and yet there's no footage of that. Yeah, but trust us, we totally got them. Yeah, and they have a a ranking of how who's how which cannons fired what shells. That's right, yeah. They say it's like, oh, they did three, they did four, they did four, they did five. Oh yeah. my god, five shells. Yeah, wow. five shells. It's not not exactly rapid fire. Um, and then... And he sends the kids to sleep, and then he looks at the kids' drawing, and it's pretty well done for a kid. It's yep. like... Just like a circle and a thing, and it's a general, and then it cuts... Yep. Zooms into the he's drawing. He's going with his little, his little sword. Yeah. Boop, 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 boop. And he's like, just going, walking along. Cause it's cuts into this as a weird animation. For what a reason. Yeah, it's like a, an animated children's drawing. I know, I just think it's... I don't know if it came to life or it's just basically... They said, you know what would be good for this point? Is like this drawing comes to life. Like, just this random drawing <laughs> comes to life. That's fair. To show maybe the kids' dreams, because comes yeah, because well, he wants he wants to be the guy that fires the cannon, and it shows you a, 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 some little round-headed dude who's like, oh, I'm gonna fire the cannon. Yeah, he's uh, he has a, this wee conquest. He goes up, uh, he slits to the like the cannons, uh, and some other people, and then he sees the bad guys. He's like, fire, and then like the cannons kind of fire a wee ball. And blows up the guys, yeah. and it's like, yay! <laughs> do do slitting. Uh, and then it cuts back to the kid going to bed once again, looking at the picture and right next to his bedroom, and goes, "Yeah, when I grow up, I want to be the guy who fires can, not like my dad." Yeah, he who... wants to be the exalted officer. Yeah, and then he puts his clothes, uh, his bed clothes, takes his clothes off, and goes to bed. End mm-hmm. of the thing, and then you get like a, a bit of flashing light. And, yeah, and then air it's siren. Like there's a siren, and air, yeah, yeah air. So it's like it, they're under attack all of a sudden at night. And I think that's like what you're saying is like, are they attacking during the day to a place that can is at night, and then during the day for them, are they attacking them yeah. at night? Yeah, it's um, like, it's, 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 it's really weird. Especially when it ends and then it just goes into a trance tune for the credits. It's like, it's like the most lively music through the entire thing. There's no... All this, like... Magnetic Rose is like kind of all about opera and stuff. And it's, it's like Opera, yeah. Yeah, and it's all about... And then... Stink bomb. I didn't really have it. I mean, it's fairly chill. It's yeah. just it it just kind of is demonstrable of what's happening. And that uh, yeah, like the soundtrack for Cannon Fodder is relatively subdued. Yeah. And then tra- then trance music. Yeah. So again, the stylization of the whole thing about Cannon Fodder is is a stylization. The story concept in it is isn't really there. I feel 
Yeah, like I was saying earlier, it's like I feel it depends on if I'm missing the message or not. Like to me, there's like some really it feels like a quite blatant uh jibe at indoctrination into war and, and you know, not really knowing the reasons you're fighting. Uh hmm. but I think like having read through some of the stuff on this i I read that on the wikipedia page in particular Mm -hmm. it says you know like during the part where they're firing and there's like oh well we we said we hit them Mm -hmm. there's no confirmation of that we have no footage of that but we we definitely hit them um but one of the things that 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 it says in the the synopsis of the the episode or the the segment is it doesn't confirm if they see anything visually or Hmm. if there's an enemy at all yeah, I mean, all you ever get for the enemy is just like, is it like shoulders with skull heads? Yeah, the thing is, it's all there's. It doesn't seem as if there's anything. There is no scene in canon fodder where I think we get a view of what the other group is. We just have what the visualization in people's minds or their perceptions of the enemy is. Mm-hmm. Um. So there's maybe something more interesting there around the idea of like you know whether there's even enemy, an enemy at all is a kind of a a fascinating type of like societal control where yeah. you know we're just keeping the rank and file doing some stuff and yeah. keeping them down and like keeping them maintaining order because we're at war we're at war and we need to do these things but you know the the higher ups the whole time maybe knowing it's like well there's nothing actually happening we're not in any danger we're just kind of trying to enjoy our lives by keeping everyone keep keeping on keeping on yeah it could be some weird deeper story of that but for that is as a teaser like I say it's it's more for me it's more of a kind of like an art piece mm-hmm. uh showing off like camera movements and animation and stuff some I can see it's a lot of zooming about with the camera panning yeah. in because I think it's another point yeah because I think it's the lift again where they, they walk onto the lift and the camera just keeps going by and keeps going forward and goes yep. by them and shows the city I think uh, technically it's very good um you know as a as a visual piece it's pretty cool mm-hmm. um there's some nice concepts in there. Uh, it's very short. Yeah, well, I think that makes it better. I don't think it can last longer uh, unless it's unless there was an actual like like method to the story because the story is just basically yeah. This is these people it's a live in this, of events. It live live in this city that does this, and yeah, and it's all, I feel similarly like if there was a. Like when we talked about magnetic rows, I'm like, I think there's stuff that you could have extrapolated on that would have maybe been quite interesting. Yeah. I think maybe, um, I think maybe what I'm, I'm either not, I'm, I'm maybe not getting the message of the, the story, or and if I'm not, if if I'm not, that's fine, that's on me. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, and which is why I think it, I would like longer because I'd like more oh. explanation, more information more narrative around this kind of war and the enemy and things like that um and i think like the the thing with the boy and the dad Mm -hmm. all they really are is like cameras they're just viewpoints they're not characters they don't really like other than the idea is like oh i want to be the guy that fires the cannon there's Mm -hmm. not much there there's not much substance and it feels like all it is is like, oh well, we we have a family. They're the sort of centerpiece of this, and you're gonna have the viewpoint of the dad who works down here. You can have the viewpoint of the mum who works in here, and you're gonna have the view of the kid who's in school. Mm-hmm. And it's like all they are is viewports into different parts of a narrative that's quite thin. Yeah, yeah. There's there's not much in this. I mean, I don't know. I think you're trying to make too much out of it by putting this narrative about indoctrination and stuff into it. I think it's it's Oh bit, totally. Like oh. that's that's what I mean. I'm either thinking too much into it or I'm completely missing the point of it. Or I think it's Well, I guess it's either or really. I d I don't I don't I can't say I didn't like it. It's It's my least favourite of the three. Yeah. Yeah, it's there's certainly no 
it's an art piece rather than like a rather than a narrative like piece it is shown like maybe really? this is it's kind of shown like war um the characters all kind of stylized with like i want to say world war one style like helmets and stuff because it's like the pan with the the, the wide brim i mm. feel and some of the higher ups have like this the kind of like soldiers uh with the the side cups and stuff and that on them some all kind of like fancy attire um but yeah i i, I maybe it's just basically saying war is just a nasty dirt, dirty business because essentially it's I mean, all maybe. grime in it and the art style depicts like it's all the uh steam it's all steam juice and everything's grimy the people faces are like that because they live in such a kind of polluted town and uh potentially overworked and seem mm -hmm. to be treat kind of poorly uh, but there is also the other people it's obviously in the city don't fall shit sit into what they're saying yeah yeah I, I don't know what do you what do you rate it where does it where does it lie for you uh, like I say I can't say it's bad it's not no not like Oh shit! Why did I watch that? That's that's just not not right. It's not like uh, when we watched say, um, ghost stories. That's always always a good one to fall back that, down. Yeah, that is. Oh, that is just bad. That is just horrendous. Um, and there was Golden Boy. I think that's what we got to. And our bad said we got three about Golden Boy yeah. and but Golden Boy was funny and has stuff. Uh, so Go Golden Boy was funny. Yeah, as a an artistic piece, I think it was more interesting than the others mm -hmm. in the way it's it's it did the animation. Mm -hmm. Um, but as a narrative piece, it certainly didn't have anything. Uh, yeah. So I I don't know I I rate them all seven to be honest, but they're different degrees of sevens. <laughs> in the sense that fair enough. Uh, cause I don't know. I think this is a five. Yeah, I, I just can't. I enjoyed I'm right, it. I'm right down in the middle on it. Yeah, I'm right down in the middle on it. Where like I I think it's. It's interesting, but it's not interesting. Yeah, it seems like a weird thing to say, but it, it, it like I it was the one I had the least interest in watching. Yeah, it was it was good. I I liked it. Like I say, I liked it in the artistic way. There's nothing there for mm -hmm. story wise. Um, it was fairly interesting. It's short, so therefore, if it was longer for me and didn't in you know improve like in, in a narrative sense then it would probably be lower because mm -hmm. it's didn't need to be that long in that sense uh i don't know i it's can't fine. i can't it's everything fine. at seven but then what what's your well they're all at seven but yeah. what order are they in what, what one did you enjoy the most to what one you enjoyed the least so I, I like Stink Bomb the most because you know mm -hmm. I, I just I kind of like the stupid fucking stupidness yeah. of that. Uh, and then probably Magnetic Rose would be the next one. It's, it had a story and it was kind of interesting what was happening there. And then this uh, can of would be the lowest, mainly because didn't have as much of a balance. Yeah, it was all just. Like it was art, uh, an art, artistic license. 
It's like, oh, we can do this, mm-hmm. and we can do this. And I assume it's, it was shorter because they've used all those techniques, which yeah. takes time to to draw and stuff. Uh, overall, I, uh... overall, man. Uh, oh, what, what are you going to say there? I, I was going to say my interest declined as we watched it. Like I, magnetic, it's magnetic rose is my favorite, and then it's then it's stink bomb, and then it's this. Yeah, yeah, that's what I thought. But uh, overall, I don't know. Uh, memories is it's decent. It's got a good mix. Yeah, I, I would say as a collection, it's definitely interesting, um, and has merit, yeah. and. If you're interested, Colin, and have a a spare one hundred and twenty pounds sterling, uh, there is a very good condition soft cover of the original Memories collection in a bookstore in Inverness that we could go and pick up. Bookstore in Inverness. Yep. One hundred and twenty. One hundred and twenty quid. Is that cheap? Original. <laughs> Original. Nineteen ninety four. Uh, and it looks cheap because if I look at the other seller things, it's like five hundred. Yeah, I don't know, man. I I I know someone. Yeah, like wants eBay. It. eBay has it for four hundred and fifty pounds. Yeah. No, I I knew someone that had it. I wonder who still has it. Oh wow. Yeah, I, I read the manga already. Because he bought it, he bought it here in in Dundee somewhere. Or, I mean, I no, guess the thing is, though, is that Mem- Memories is not just those three stories, the the manga. It's a bigger collection, though, right? Uh, well, maybe he's just got the first volume then. No, no, no. I just mean there's more stories than just in that one book. Maybe I'm maybe I'm wrong. Uh, sure, it was just three, but then it was that was twenty years ago. I read that. He got it in Glasgow. Uh, and then I, I oh, borrowed, wow. borrowed off him. I read it and gave it back. Yeah, because he wasn't up. Get a hardcover uh-huh. today from uh, Amazon. Yeah. Uh, 240. 240. Or the paperback is over 1,000. Um, yeah. No. No, no. It's good. <laughs> um, no, 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 I'm fine. <laughs> I don't need to spend that much money. <laughs> nah, I'm, I'm good. I'm well, good. Uh, if I'm doing that, I'm just eating uh, pot noodles for the rest of my the rest of the year. <laughs> the, the rest, the rest of your natural life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, especially because it's so much money. I can boil water now. Ah. <laughs> uh... I I I mm, I can't find a uh, a story listing for the memories collection. Yeah. I Cuz uh if you if you look up the Wikipedia page, mm-hmm. it says that it's just based on three of his manga short stories. Yeah, so but I think maybe the the bind this into it because that's what he kind of started doing before he did a cure, I think. Yeah. The problem is, is that if you uh, if you look for memories, uh, it doesn't. It just takes you to the movie page. Well, maybe it's not memories. Then. Just... But no, you said there was the the big got what's called. Memories online. It's it's called Memories Collection. Yeah. I think you got it for twenty quid twenty years ago. Holy shit. Fucking gold mine there and it's hundred and twenty in in Inverness bookstore. Uh so far away though. <laughs> Cost you more than a uh, hundred and 120 up there would be like a good yeah I, half type of fuel. I certainly I spend too much money on manga now. 
if you're looking at the prices like that, then yeah. <laughs> oh, I, I, no, I, I have never. I, the, the most I've ever spent is on the monster, perfect on, editions. On the monster. Yeah. It's not. Um, it's not I did. Talking about the the I energy did, drink either. No, I did also just recently buy the first couple of editions of Fire Punch. All right. Which is the one uh, from the guy who did uh, Chainsaw Man about a guy who's always on fire. <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> All right. He has a thing for, just, like, I... what happens if this guy was always on fire? Let's write a story about that. <laughs> what happens if this man is able to, like, have chainsaws for uh, all his body parts? It was uh, Super Eye Patch Wolf who was like, and what's this? What story about? It's like, it's about a man who's on fire all the time. It's like, and that's okay because it doesn't hurt him. It's like, no, he's in constant agony. And you're like, oh, okay. <laughs> wow. <laughs> That sounds like that, Ryan, immediately Ryan at that George. point I was like, "Sweet, yeah, yeah, it does sound like Ryan George." But I was immediately like, "Oh, that sounds good. That sounds good. I, I, I could read that." So I've got those to read uh, this weekend. Nice. There you go. I've, I've also started uh, collating my my manga into my iCollect app, my custom collection, uh, so that I can uh, know what it is I actually have. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, iCollect. Mm-hmm. Start getting that shit all together. Need to need to get uh my, my, my wish list on Amazon up to date with the, the other books that I'm missing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I need, anyway. I need volume six of Battle Angel Leader. Volume six. Have you oh, do you have the Akira hardbacks? No. I've got a I went to some random comic con one of the churches that was up from my flat mm -hmm. with uh, Oz and there was this guy selling the first volume of Akira there. I was talking oh, wow. and I was talking to the guy and he says, Yeah, 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 I'm selling this because I went and bought like the, the new editions of the hardbacks of it, so I don't need this anymore. I've got oh, wow. all the other well, ones. You can get the whole collection uh, from a seller on Amazon for 125 quid. No, that's better. That's a whole. That's a collection of books. Two, three, four, five, six, six books, and uh, they're chunky. Well, oh yeah, like the the sixth book is a beefy book. <laughs> oh god, is it beefier than other ones? Because like the it, it's the beefiest. The paperback one is like that thick. Well, it looks as if one is pretty big, two and three are smaller than one, four is about the same size as one, five might be slightly bigger than four and one, six is bigger than all of the other ones. <laughs> Combined. <laughs> uh, well, no, that would be impressive. I think it's like a, I'd say it's probably a one plus a two. A one plus a two. Oh, yeah. Wow. Anyway, uh, we, we did it, Colin. Mm -hmm. We managed to make... Uh, 20 minute episode of something last 50 minutes of discussion uh, impressive to be honest I think this one is probably the most interesting one to this, to discuss because I guess that's true It's it wasn't such like clear cut like no he didn't you watch it and you go like why did I watch that what's that all about mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. it's there's nothing really there um, yeah, which is maybe why, I, like I say, I gave it a sim because it's they were all good in their own merits of what they wanted to do, and they're doing mm -hmm. shaky hands on the screen here. Uh, well, because you've done shaky hands, that means we're at the end of the episode. All right, okay. <laughs> Jazz hands. That's that's the signal. End of the episode. <laughs> end of the episode. Um. Yeah. You've listened to another episode of Who's That Anime, an anime podcast that can be found where all good podcasts can be found. We don't make any money from this. We just like to talk about anime and manga and stuff and other things. Uh, but obviously, if you like what we do, it would be super cool if you were to give us a review uh, or tell a friend about the show. That'd be super cool. Um, we have a Facebook page. That's facebook.com forward slash Who's That Anime, where we post the latest episode releases and occasional anime memes. 
Uh, we have a Discord channel. Uh, you can get, find that in the show notes. There's a link there. Uh, we also put these episodes on YouTube where Colin painstakingly puts them all together. That's at youtube.com if you search for at who's that anime. Uh, Colin and I also occasionally like to play video games. Uh, Colin at twitch.tv forward slash couchfuel and myself at twitch.tv forward slash hail payment. Uh, you can find archives of all of the games and things we've played from those channels on YouTube as well. If you go to youtube.com and search for at couchfuel or at hail payment. Yeah, that's it. All the all the and things. We'll be back. Yeah. We'll be back next week with season ten. Of oh. Season 10? 1 yep. 0? 1 0. The one, big 10. Big 10. Uh, made du- it, double digits. Made it to double digits, people. What the hell's going on? Yep. You should... This is this is episode. What episode number is this? 116. <laughs> yeah. Triple digits oh, there. Shit. Damn. Yeah. Time flies. Time flies. It does. Well. Uh, we will return with uh, our first episode in season 10 which is on Angelic Lair Mm -hmm. Um, and we'll see you then yeah see you then Space Cowboys yep people same anime place same anime time yep that was smooth let's go bye smooth smooth hit the eject button eject bye bye